Okay, so we have the CO2 here. I don't know if it's going down anymore. It doesn't feel like it is. Oh, and the mining. Nice. So I want to mine all this out so we could remove a lot of the heat energy. Mine all this out. I think I could go underneath. No, I can't. So I could mine this and that from the bottom. Go down here, jump, jump, climb up, reverse mine this. I would love to. Yeah, I would love to do that. Mama's cleaning himself. Only way to do it, man. Mama knows. Gotta be a clean kitty cat. Shovels are all right. Everything is all right. Ooh, pickled meal lies down 100,000 kcals. That's not a good look. All right. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, 60, 80. Wait, wait, wait. 10, 20. 30, 60, 90, 120. And this is 15, right? 150, 180. Divided by 5. That's what? 3, and then that's 30. 36. So this is 36 dupes. I believe this is 20 per dupe. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If I divide that by 3, let's say that's 6 dupes worth of food. So we're at 40 dupes worth of food and just meal lice. Everything else is coming out from other food sources. I don't know if I have enough meal lice. I might want to add some more. Do you have any way of producing dirt or are meal wood still powered by first mine out the world? No, uh, arbitraries. Right here. Oh, you have the other meal lice in the middle. That's right. Some of them aren't growing though. It's a little bit too warm over here. I have arbitraries. The pips eat it and give you dirt. And we're also doing ethanol. So we process the lumber into ethanol. And then this comes into uh, polluted dirt because of the ethanol distillery produces polluted dirt. And we convert that back into regular dirt. So everything comes from lumber, but we get lumber to dirt in two methods. So we're actually dirt positive. This is gonna be positive most cases. I think the only time this goes down is if I'm building more meal lice. But yeah, the arbitrary, we have a lot of dirt coming in from that. It's pretty sweet. I could add in a couple more meal lice farms. I'm kind of down. We're going to add... 20, 35 more. That's going to be 7 more dupes. We'll have about 50 dupes on meal lice. Got to lurk for RP. Nice hang for a bit. Keep it up too. We'll see you doing great. Thank you, Mastaz. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for hanging out. I know, man. Get into the RP. Hope you have a nice time, and we'll see you next time, Mastaz. Have a good one. Got a little bit of sweeping here. Not bad, not bad. One, two, three, four. This is all mineable. Do that. Trimming this. All right, let's start setting up the suit dock area that we're going to have to have. That I think it's going to be right here. So we're going to have to make some suit docks. Uh, it's probably going to be four tile range, right? And then it's probably going to be another four tile range here. Oh, this doesn't line up. Whoa, hold up, hold up. This, oh, this doesn't line up. Ah, I see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I have extra space here. Feels bad. Okay, that's fine. So I'll have to just align myself to the proper alignment. Uh, probably have to get rid of the deodorizer right here. 
And then we're going to build some suit checkpoints so that we could have a system go all the way to the top soon. And I need to start providing for that. New dupes. What do we have today? Plastic. I don't need that. Ooh, shine it. Uh, I'm going to grab this. So we could simulate lag. So this is why uh, critters are bad that fly. Look at my map. Look at the pathing. Jesus Christ. Imagine just simulating the pathing for a flying critter. This is why you don't get flying critters. Not gonna lie. This is actually why. The amount of lag generated for this is actually really insane. So, we're going to... Uh... Yeah, I have to team for achievement. That's actually why I'm doing this. We're going to put in some doors here, temporarily. And then we're just going to put in a grooming station in here. Hopefully that doesn't bop anything. I hope the supercomputers are not industrial equipment. That's why they are locked 100%, man. Yep, I got to terminate after I get the achievement, though. Let's try to make this uh, built first. And mom is napping again. Guys, I'm gonna do something I never do. I bought an energy drink a week ago because I had plans to do something. I ended up not drinking the energy drink, so now I have it. And I'm not gonna lie, man. I don't normally drink energy drinks. People of chat, how do you guys feel about it? Not me drinking it, but just energy drinks in general. Holy shit, that's a Jolly Rancher. Oh, this is watermelon lime? Oh, crap. Too sweet coffee for the win. I had coffee every morning. I wonder if I'm going to crash. We'll see. We'll see. I drink coffee and tea uh, and water. I, I think the last time I had an energy drink was years ago. Years. Ago. Yeah, dude, that's going to be me, Cthulhu. Take a sip, and I'm going to start shaking, dude. <laughs> start shaking. I wonder if you could do that playing poker. So people think you're, you're like, panicking. Oh, man, the guy got the shakes. And then people think you're, like, uh, not bluffing or bluffing because your, your hands are shaking. <laughs> and then and then it's like no man that's just the energy drinks man you got baited hey you got him hey bro hope you have a good stream thank you johnny appreciate the kind words man thank you for stopping by have a big collection of different energy cans in the late 90s dude stefan have you ever had a surge if you're from norway they might have it as uh urge they drop the s that used to be bomb dude it used to taste delicious I used to get that, man. Yeah, I, I loved it, man. It's it's not something people sell anymore. What in the world? Grudge chick. Hey, the homie grudge chick. I see you over there. Thank you so much for the raid. Shout out to grudge chick. Grudge chick to sheets. I spelled that right? Playing some Oni as well. How was the streams, dude? Thank you so much. And yo, man, if you guys don't know Grezjack, he's cool. Does a lot of Oni stuff. He has a lot of... Uh... I'm not going to lie, man. He does... Like some mad scientist stuff over there, man. I saw his... Uh... I saw his Rad Bolt machine gun build. That shit was kind of wild. <laughs> it was, it was kind of wild, not going to lie. But yo, man, thanks so much for the raid. Uh, is that Modoc or MacDoc? Hello, hello. That's my kitty cat Mamba, if you guys don't know. And thank you so much for the raid, Mr. Grushek. How was the streams? Hope you're doing well. Placebo, placebo. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for bringing your community over to share with ours. Did I reverse raid you? No, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Yo, man, hope stream was well. Hope everything was great. Appreciate the raid and appreciate the support. I bet you bait yourself thinking you're still representing your tell and you aren't on uh, a monster. 
Dude, I'm drinking uh Venom Energy. I don't even know what this is. Oh, did you ever get the snowballs, dude? I see over there citrus. It was uh it was not bad. I wasn't a fan. The original urge and surge was the business. Congratulations on 100 dupes. Thank you, Gross Trick. I'm trying not to lag. That's the hardest thing to do in this game. <laughs> I'm trying not to lag. With the 100 dupes. 10 FPS is great. Yeah, man. It's not bad, right? I'm trying not to lag. That's the hardest thing. But, yo. We're making it. And we're going to be uh, dabbling into space very soon. Get abyss bugs for the lulls. No, man. It's too much lag. I can't do that. I won't touch energy drinks anymore. Transport it more than uh, one patient who overdid them. Ooh, yeah. That's a thing. That's true. Got to watch out for that. But yo, Grush check. How was the streams? I know you don't speak a lot of English. But uh, yo, man. Hope the stream was good. Hope everything was great. Appreciate the raid, man. Thank you so much for bringing your community over. Really helps me out a lot. Tessa Padawan, what's good? I see you over there. Repress. But yeah, man. If you guys like Oni, and uh, if you guys speak Russian, Grushchek is, uh, does a lot of uh, Oni over there. I think he's been playing some new games as well in the uh, simulation categories. Check the man out. Drop the man a follow. You need to have strong nerves for this. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I feel like it depends. If if you got the experience, you know, it's 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 easy time. You have a lot of dupes. You can have everyone running on a hamster wheel and it's going to be fine. You just got to have a lot of space for the dupes. And then a strong computer so you don't lag out. And then you got to get lucky with the water geysers. You got to make sure you have a lot of water. Salt water. More salt water. And of course, another salt water geyser. We got to tap into this one soon. I've punched the keyboard or monitor at least once with this game. What? Alric? Really? Come on, man. I don't want that to happen. So if you need help, let me know. I got you. You hate to hear that kind of thing happen, boys. You really do. Punch a, punch a keyboard or monitor, man. Feels bad. If you ever need help, man, you know who to ask. I got you, man. Best as I can. One, two, three, four. So I want to be here. And then we go straight across. And then I probably want to tie up like that. And then we'll get to mine this out. All right, all right. So we got the water and the bottom to clear. It's probably not that big of a deal, though, to be honest. Start. Still got to start uh, mining stuff out. Yeah, this part's going to be a trouble. Because everything just falls down into here. I guess I should just mine this out first. Do this part as well. And then we'll have to climb up top from here to grab the stuff on the corner. This is all going to fall down to there, so we have to do that now. Amazingly, with my anxiety disorder, I still manage to have a long history in public safety without still without being overwhelmed. Dude, that's tough, man. Doesn't that mean every day is kind of like, kind of like a fight? That's tough, dude, if that's how it is. That sounds tough. Don't know how it actually is, but man, be strong, dude. Gotta be strong. Gotta do this right here. All right, so where is my water going? It is moving out, just taking some time. There is reservoir space, that's good. I just need to go through the water tank. That's what I'm hoping to do now. I think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Know that the salinator's in here, though. I would have to move this up. Kind of a pain. Or we just pipe it directly afterwards into the bottom. Remove this pump and then build a hat trench. Finish this setup. Unpermitted food? Oh, no. I'm out of food, boys. I am out of food. This is not good. 
All right. Eight dupes, no food. Okay, so we do have the emergency pepper bread. That is... Oh, didn't we found out there was like a thousand sleet wheat grain right here? Yeah. I'm making some pepper bread, boys. I forgot about that. All right, so let's go with 10 units per bread. Let's go with 20 here and 20 here. Let's make some pepper bread. Forget about that sometimes. Once we crack into the ice biome right here, we're going to grab all the sleet wheat grain, dude. That's going to be sweet. Free food. Not going to even be mad about it. All right, now from here... I want this, and we got a breakthrough here. I think for this part, we're going to trim out two layers just to make this trimmed out. And then we're going to have to close up this spot to the space. And then we're going to have to mine out all the regolith, make a space setup for all that good stuff. Pepper bread sounds like something that makes the toilets violently expl uh, explode. Dude, have you ever had, uh, I believe it's called scallion pancakes? Sleet wheat farm. I got to start making those, actually. I should probably start. Uh, yeah, I probably should start making those sleet wheat farms. Cthulhu's right. We got to start making those setups. I could use this. What kind of geyser is this again? Oh, this is hot oxygen? Yeah, I'm never going to use that. Never. 500 degree oxygen. Okay. So, yeah. I might just build this straight down. With all the sleet wheat, because we know we're going to need it. That could be a thing. That could be a thing. All right, so to make this easy, if I go straight down, that makes sense. The geyser being inside doesn't matter. So I wanted to potentially put some reed fiber here for the pips to become cuddle pips in this area. If we use this, this is two ranches, right? This is a lot of space. I could probably make a sleet wheat farm underneath that because it'd be top down anyways. And in that case... Oh, it would be a little bit off. But I think it'd be fine because I'd probably do that design. Oh, the question is, do I want the liquid lock in the build or not? I probably don't. And then with the geyser being here, I probably do a setup like this. Ah, that's a problem, huh? I do want this to line up. If I do that... And then this space is a little bit off as well. All right, let's cancel that. Uh, if I put the this inside, the lather path thing is going to be a little bit weird. I also might want multiple entrances because we need to control the temperature inside. So I need to make sure that we have one gas and that it's insulated so that the temperature doesn't leak out. Probably build a steam turbine aqua tuner setup somewhere nearby. It shouldn't be uh, too bad. And then we just got to have the layers. <coughs> oh, crap. Sorry about that, guys. I have to cough. Hmm. Yeah, I I'm, I'm going to want to make it flush. So... It's probably going to be like that. Yeah, it's going to be weird. So this pocket might not have anything planted. And then we have to plastic ladder this all the way down. Oh, and then we get to the geyser. Oh, that's a problem. Hold up, hold up. That That's a problem, man. Because I can't ladder through that. So I either I'm going to be on the right side or the left side. 
if I go up to here, it sticks out a little bit, which kind of sucks. So I probably want to be on the right side. Which is fine, I guess. Alright, let's ladder up this way. And then these have to extend out as it should. You got a convenient AETN to build around? I have one down here. But it's probably not going to build around that. We could, but I don't want to. It's, it's going to be a little bit too slow for my liking. And then I need to make sure this lines up. Do you prefer base game or DLC? I prefer DLC. I recommend for new players to get the DLC. Actually. <laughs> the DLC is amazing, man. Because not only is it... I feel like a little bit better. It's... It's also because of like... I, I like the additions. Even though I know they're trying to make it so that it's streamlined, both games are being updated, updates affect both games, and it's great. The thing is, is that the DLC just feels like there's more toys, and overall, that gives me a better feeling. Like, feels like it's a better game. I don't know if that makes sense. That has to work like that. And then this doesn't. And then this could work like this. And then we just go up and down this way. Now this does mean I want this set up. And then we will remove two for each of the ladder pathways so they can still run through. That's going to be important so no one gets stuck. Alright, so now let's do a quick measurement. Uh, here to here. This is going to be 37 tiles divided by 2, so it's 18 because it's 36 you want to round down. That's because of the uh, pit planning pattern. It's going to be every other tile, kind of like this. So this is going to be 18 sweet weed per row. So if we just put 2 here, we'd assume 20 per row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, we get 16 grains per plant, right? And I'm going to be cooking specifically Frost Burgers and Pepper Bread. Frost Burgers are going to be optional every so often. 3 grains, 1,200. 10 grains, 4,000. It's about the same in terms of KCAP production. Not going to lie. I wish there was the original world gen on DLC. Like only one planet too. I mean, but that would make like... That would totally just kind of like make rocketry obsolete. That's that's the problem with that. Having actually obsolete rocketry is kind of tough. So this is going to be what? 76 cycles. Right? 76? 72. 72. It's still pretty slow. Hmm. Let's say that three grains is one dupe because it's 1200, right? For frost months. We're going to use that as baseline. So three grains, 1200. We're going to round that down to a thousand. That's how much a dupe needs to eat per day. Oh, they're eating pepper bread. Sweet. And then we get 16 grains per harvest. Is that correct? Is it 16 or is it 18? 18 okay so that means each sleet wheat gives me six dupes worth of food so let's do some math so each grain is six dupes because it's 18 divided by three right that's six and then that means every 72 cycles i provide six dupes with food per plant that's not a lot <laughs> that's not a lot so 72 times a thousand that's how many kcals i need to provide and then i get a thousand per cycle 
and then each plant is six. So I need 12 plants. I thought it was 84. 84? Is it 84? Am I wrong? Nah, it's 72. 72. So every 12 wild sleep wheat plants is enough for one dupe to survive. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So these rows right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is 10 dupes only. <laughs> That's gross. No, 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 20 dupes. That's not bad though. No, I don't have grub grubs. This is vanilla. Can you farmers touch it for better stats? Yes. Uh, if you use the farm station and you have fertilizer, you could apply that to the wild plants and give it the buff. That works. However, I don't have a lot of fertilizer. Feels bad. Yeah, vanilla strats, man. You gotta keep it vanilla. <laughs> Feels bad. So we get 20. This is 120 plants from here to here. And that's exactly enough food for 10 dupes. Let's provide enough food for 20 dupes. So we'll add some more. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's technically correct. And I think that's going to be the setup. It's going to be a large sleet wheat farm, boys. Biggest sleet wheat farm all time. And I think I need to double layer this. Wood ethanol fertilizer. The thing is, is that I'm using the... Well, what do we need for fertilizer? Let's look at the refinements. Pollute water. We do get that. I'm using the dirt for mealwood. I have a lot of phosphorite. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Only takes 400 cycles to wild plant now. Wait, what? 400 cycles? That sounds like a lot. Maybe we can use the fertilizer and make some in a separate setup and just transfer them over. I have... Does the fertilizer come out hot? That is something I am worried about. If the fertilizer is hot... Dude, that's huge rip. <laughs> hot fertilizer. That does not sound like the business. Oh, I gotta remove the walkers. It feels bad. Hope nobody gets stuck. That's not gonna be fun if someone gets stuck. Alright, we wait for the dupes to get started on the Neil Sleet Wheat Farm. And then... Where's my new spawn? The new... Uh, oh no, some of these didn't get built. And that's due to the ladder placements. Feels bad. The radium piping should be good enough. I might want to add another 15 mealwood here. One, two, and then plants. And then that's going to mean another 15, so... Yeah, we'll have about 50 dupes worth of food here. Should be good. Not even accounting for that. Then we got to remove the ladder right there. Get that planted in. Alright, so the water pipeline. This is actually finished. Let's pause. I need to cut this. And then we need to allow this through. So we need to wait for this to empty out. 100%. That's what we need to wait for. No, I am not feeding the voles anymore. I will feed them again. Uh, once we have at least 300 tons of dirt. So if I could move away from the mealwood right here. Where's my mealwood? When, I'm, when I move away from the mule here, all the dirt's probably going to go to the shovels, realistically. Because the dirt's going to have to go somewhere. And I think it's going to go to the shovels. It makes a lot of sense that I would do that. 
Since uh, the shovels can just eat the dirt, give us a lot of food. And that also makes it so that we don't have to ranch too many other critters. The fishing line is also going to be multiplying soon. There's two fish now. It's going to go up to five. And then after that, we're going to get uh, Surf and Turf. Why not Regolith once you get to space? I probably do. Uh, the thing is, is that I probably make a different design. Because this is a little bit... Uh, how do I say this? Moving the hot regolith into here, it's going to bot my wild plants. So if I do feed them regolith, it's going to be a, like up here. I wouldn't mind doing it. But you're going to get more of the delectables. So there's the yellow shovel. I don't know if I have them anymore. Oh, they're all dead. Feels bad. That's where the heat comes in. There is a shovel variant, right? The delectable right here. This happens when they're... Uh, temperature range of the regular shovel goes up. So the electable chance goes up when the body temperature is between 60 and 100. So that means if you feed them regolith, you're going to be more often than not, you're going to be getting uh, delectables, which gives you less meats. It's 9,600 versus 16,000, right? No, it's 8,000. They, they reduced this? I thought it was 96. Well, whereas the shovel is double that, right? 16,000. So you technically don't want to feed them regolith because it's hot. Why are you on mealwood? Uh, that's the only plant that I could grow domestically that I could actually fertilize. Because this just feeds off of dirt, right? And I get my dirt from my arbor tree. I don't have anything else that I could feed. Uh, since I'm doing 100 dupes, we're at 100 dupe population. All of my water geysers, cool slush, salt water, and the salt water up here, has to go to my spawns. Because if I don't, I run out of air. <laughs> so all of my water geysers have to go into my spawn designs. I have a spawn here, I have a spawn here, I have a rusty oxidizer spawn, another spawn at the bottom. And if I don't, we run out of oxygen. So that means anything that requires water that grows, it's not going to be allowed because most of my water has to go to the uh, oxygen. So things like bristle blossom, we don't uh, grow that because it consumes water. Arbor trees, I wild planted them. We're growing dash assault vines. Mealwood is just dirt. Uh, nosh sprouts. I could probably grow this, but in order for you to make tofu, it requires water in the recipe. So I didn't want to do that. There is water weed, but the problem with this is that you can't eat this unless you have something else. So because of that, I have to grow mealwood. I don't have really a lot of options. Um, dust caps. I don't have slime biomes. And because of that, I didn't want to make a puff ranch because how flying critters tend to be uh, a problem. So because of that, yeah, I have to grow meal wood. It's the only resource I have a lot of that it's actually affordable. Hope that helps, uh, Tom the Twitch. Hello all, Ace Billy Boy Hero, how are you? I see you over there. Krug, what's good? Coming in with the panic? Hope you're doing well, man. Happy Tuesdays. You have to cool your regular if that's a pain. Yeah, it is. Now the upside is, is that you could technically use that as a, as a heat source. This is 300 degrees. Start crushing it and then start sweeping it into a steam box. Make it so that we could generate energy that way up top without having to pull a wire from the bottom of the map. That is going to be an option, but it's going to be later on. This game is extremely completed. Not for my mind, but I uh, like it. I see you over there, Terzeev. Yeah, thanks for extensive explanation. Of course, sometimes you might not understand the things of uh, why we do what we do. That's why you ask questions. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Let me know. I got you guys. Hey, yeah, uh, Vertrunes, what's good? What's wrong, Vertrunes? Coming in with the uh, angry face. You doing all right, man? Did you have a bad Tuesdays, yo? I'm still on the beginner power situation. Oh, what's your power source? I will say that I keep all my dupes on hamster wheels. Look at this. My metal refinery is off of three hamster wheels. Until I get to hydrogen. And then once you get the hydrogen, you know, it's it's a good time. 
I would recommend probably building something like this, though. Having your hydrogen generators inside your spawn makes it a lot easier most of the time. Oh, you had a bad Monday? That sucks, Richards. Hope it picks up. Bad Mondays are not a good time, though. I'm good, thank you. How are you? You do sound a lot more happy. I mean, I'm going to get to play Oni, dude. Oni's a great time. It's it's hard to have a bad time playing Oni. I got to be honest. It's it's really hard to have a bad time. Oni's just great, man. I love the game. It's Tuesday, though, man. It's not Monday. That was yesterday. Why not coal? Uh, coal. So I like having future-proof solutions. Future-proof solutions meaning that it's something that's not going to be a problem uh, long-term. So if that makes sense, coal is not renewable via a geyser source. So we have a hydrogen geyser. And then we're taming that. And then we have a natural gas geyser as well. And we're taming that. So because of those two, uh, I'm using that for power. Natural gas and then hydrogen. We have a three-tier power system. So basically what happens is we use the ethanol first that we get from the lumber. And I'm making ethanol because I want the byproducts. So what happens is, is that the arbitraries, the pips eat the branches, we get dirt. And then when we harvest the lumber, it gets dropped off in our ethanol distillery. And what happens is, is that the ethanol processes the lumber into ethanol and then polluted dirt. That allows me to compost the polluted dirt into regular dirt so that I could use that to feed the mealwood. Now, over here, we're converting the ethanol through the petroleum generator into polluted water. This gives us 750 grams per cycle. I believe it's four petroleum gens if you keep them running basically all the time, you could feed three electrolyzers. Uh, basically one to one. Well, no, it's four to three, right? So I get water from that as well. So it's like, not only that, I get the geyser power. I'm utilizing another source process chain to make into uh, resources that I need. So coal I don't need outside of power. So I didn't think it made sense for me to make like multiple hatch ranches, right? Like this, just to get coal, because it's like, well, I could build something else for power and it gives me uh, dirt, which is uh, very nice to have. Yeah, it's a time sink, 100%. Hey, legit, I want to ask a question about City Sketch yesterday. Doing more of a meme city, not being perfect in all attributes. I would have, so the thing with that is, is that I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough. Like, meme cities would be cool, but I don't think it's going to make sense if it's going to be, like, a lot of people in chat just giving inputs on the memes they want to see. So, like, something like that, whether it's a challenge run, meme run, whatever, like, I kind of want to have objectives, if that makes sense. Not not so much a type of playthrough. So like you could say challenge run, but what type of challenge is what I'm asking. So it's like, yeah, those are ideas, but we need to kind of like, if possible, elaborate a little bit more. Come out with a little bit more details. What about Transport Fever? I am not good at that game. <laughs> I am not good at that game, 100%. I am bad at that game. Good, good. It took me so long to realize why the submerged oxidizers were so much better. Not overpressurizing is nice. Yeah, it's sweet, dude. Like, just looking at the gas levels, natural separation. Look at that. 1,300 kilograms. That is over a ton per tile. So you just let this run constantly. And it's always nice. Whoa. Nerd emoji. I see his sign. What up, legit in chat? What's going on? All hack. Hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesdays. Looking good. Appreciate Ace Billable Hero. What about downloading someone else's map and then trying to fix the traffic? I do have that as things I want to do. I don't have any maps right now. No one has reached out to me and told me that they have a map saved up for me. I've asked chat a long time. No one has this told me that they had a map. So I don't know if we have anything that 
I could actually fix, if that makes sense. Like, that, that'd be a great idea. I do want to do it. I just don't think I have any maps. The thing is, is that I've asked chat. Some people said, yeah, and then I just don't hear from them again. So it's like, I don't really know. It, it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know if we have enough people that want to participate. Auto save lag. All right. I don't need the iron. I have uh, 500 tons. I don't need the brine. Pit bags, kind of cool. I guess I could grab these. All right. So we locked up the doors here, which is fine. Farm station for the room. <laughs> it's so jank. Did you make a sleep weed farm this one? I'm making it right now. This box is going to be all sleep wheat. We're waiting for him to, uh, you know, basically build everything right now. It's taking some time. <laughs> it's taking some time. It's going to be fine. Building the sleep wheat farm. Let's remove a lot of the ladders we don't need. We have 100 dupes, so the amount of uh, labor we have, it's pretty high up. Alright, so I probably have to do a layer of uh, insulated tiles like this at the bottom. Which means it's going to overcover, but, you know, has to be done. Because I want to have the natural tiles, because they have to have a layer of insulation afterwards. And if we plant on the line, I have to do that, so... Going to be the necessary evils. Wait for the dupes to get to work. Remove the ladders. And then we'll have to make a suit line coming in. Which shouldn't be too bad. I'll have to realign some of the uh, ladders and the whatnots now. Shouldn't be that bad. Four. Remove these. This and that. These two. We get to remove this. Uh, this door and these tiles no longer need to be here. Not bad. We're almost done. Having our salt, war uh, salt water geyser spillway set up. This is getting mined out. This is done. Sweet. All we have to do is kind of just use up the water now. Once we use up the water, we're going to be done. That's going to be sweet. Alright, so back to the spawn. Because this hasn't been set up yet. Okay, so we need to go inside. Uh, we rerouted the water pipeline, and it's clean, so we could remove this now. Okay, this water line is going to get cut. It's going to move up this way. And then once the water leaves, we're going to empty out this pipeline. Because we're not going to need it anymore. Cut it up to here. We just need to wait for everything to just leave the system. How hot's the water? 46. I could dump it out early. But that just affects my water on this side. Which honestly doesn't change anything. Alright, so let's get the pipelines in for now. Let's move that, move this. We could probably cut this in half. So that we could start feeding the other electrolyzers. Make that a little bit, uh, just produce a little bit more gas. Use up a little bit more water a little bit faster. This game looks complicated. Honestly, it's one of those games that once you start playing, you're going to love. Oni's a great game, man. It really is. Man, you know what? People of chat, how would you guys feel about uh, dabbling in the other clay games? There's a lot of uh, clay titles out there that I'm thinking about trying out. Well, not really try out. I want to play some Don't Starve. <laughs> I'm thinking about dabbling in with the Don't Starve franchise. Playing some of those Don't Starve games. I hear it could be uh, pretty cool. The water spilled out, which is fine. Oh, this might spill in and make ice. Don't Starve would be cool. I'm thinking about it. Why not, right? I like the Oxygen Not Included game that they made, so maybe not... Uh, so why not try out the Don't Starve, right? I've never played or watched any other clay games. Ooh, okay, okay. The new one they're working on looks fun. Oh, is it that? That's the mage one, right? Mighty Sush. 
I've been interested in see how you play Satisfactory. I actually don't think my PC could handle it. Satisfactory is a game that feels like it, it starts to lag hard. Because it does, right? I've seen people play it. I don't think my PC could handle streaming it, honestly. Maybe you might like it though, Croconuts. Who knows? Who? Clay Studios. Clay Entertainment. The people that made uh, Oxygen on Include. Oh, there's automation here. Let me remove this. Let's also remove this wall. One, two, three, four. Yeah. It's hard on PCs. Yeah. So it's like, I'm reluctant to play it because of that. I don't think my PC could handle it. Oh, might be cool. Don't starve cool, but not as deep as Oni, but still pretty deep. I heard, because uh, there's there's another guy that I've raided, and he's big in uh, Don't Starve. His name is Kaizo. And he says that Oni is, uh, is, is as deep as Don't Starve. And I usually, you know, I agree with you. I think it's the other way around. Who knows? But he says the game is really deep, and once you understand a little bit of the knowledge that you need to understand, it 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 opens up. Kind of like how Oni opens up once you start understanding how to build the elaborate systems, such as building a spawn design, right? And a cooling setup, so you have a little bit of stability with the cooling, right? Everything comes out at a fixed temperature, 23.7. It's pretty, pretty stable. Rotwood, the roguelike dungeon crawler. Oh, it's a dungeon crawler. I didn't know they were working on that. Let's hope it's good, man. Dungeon crawlers are hard to, to get right. And it has to do, in my opinion, with the fact that it's very repetitive by nature. Factorial was cool. I have Factorial. I didn't really like the game, sadly. Factorial was... Like, you do a lot of the similar things. Uh, like how some of the things work how a lot of the things function in factorio like moving the moving the elements it's it feels like it's a couple steps down from playing oni it, it honestly feels like if oni came out 10 years ago it would be what factorio is like factorio feels very unpolished when it comes to a video game and what I mean by that is they do a very poor job masking that the fact that is a uh, a man you it's basically a uh, conveyor line management game, right? They do a very poor job of hiding that. And what I mean is that it just feels like I'm not playing a game. It just feels like I'm moving things like it's my job. And that's because I used to work in a similar industry in manufacturing where in operations that's kind of what you want to do you want to make sure you can produce the good and you're moving things on conveyor rails to automate the jobs and it feels like it's a step down from what you have in oni in terms of like the elaborate systems because everything is just going over or under and then that's kind of it there's not a lot of depth to it you're moving things uh just to move it you might get some new toys that are just upgraded versions of the same equipment but it doesn't feel like there's any meat or substance to Factorio. That's just my opinion, right? And from how I, yeah, I've spent only 50 hours playing the game. So, yeah, to me, it's like I'm probably never going to go back. DST is deep. Base building of City Skylines, detailing to the max tool, you will totally, totally get into it. Hey, man, we'll see, Nick. We'll see. But yeah, I do want to give DST a shot. All oh, right, now in Oni, I'm kind of stumped on how to advance because I'm afraid of heat. I can understand that about Factorio. I like the train systems though. Oh yeah, the train systems. Yeah, they were not cool. I got up to building a train line. I got I got into oil. <laughs> I got into oil. Do Steezy, what's up, man? I see you over there. Yeah, I'm thinking about the Don't Starve, dude. If you guys don't know, Do Steezy does a lot of Don't Starve as well. Do Steezy, I think you're a clay ambassador, right? Yeah, when we play Factorial with my friends, we act like it's our job with shifts and all that. Yeah, you see, I can't. I don't want to do a. Sh I, I I don't want to do a game that feels like a job, if that makes sense. You know, so to me, it's like I want to get away from that, if that's understandable. To me, it feels like a job. I mean, to you guys, if you love that type of games, you know, I I don't want to say that I'm knocking on it, but because of you know how. I worked in real life and it kind of seems like that to me it feels that way so I just want to avoid it 
Yeah, Clay Ambassador. Also recommending uh, DSD to people. Oh, I see you over there. I'm thinking about it, man. I need to get some time. Check it out. Because the only thing I know how to do is make beef jerky. I'm going to be real. I don't know anything about Don't Starve. Factor is a great platform, but it's sandbox more than owning DST. You make your own fun. You need to challenge yourself. 100%. But then it's like, that also means that you kind of have to like the tool set that that game gives you when it's a sandbox. And I don't. That's, that's what it comes down to. You're right that it is sandbox, though. So you got to oil. Did you get to advanced oil? I, what's advanced oil, man? <laughs> what's advanced oil? Is that is that where you make oil into petroleum, Kappa? Hola, what's going on, Dark Matter? I see you over there. Hope you're doing well. You ever play any prison architect? I have not, Krug. I have not. That's because I have RimWorld. And RimWorld, to me, because it's a similar uh, engine, it felt like a better version of Prison Architect. So I never actually got that. And then now it's like, I don't even know what Paradox is doing with Prison Architect after they acquired it. They came out with one DLC, and it kind of feels like it's kind of dead. I don't know. I don't know. Streamer doesn't know. Feels bad. Have you been to legit? Do my best. Uh, honestly, just trying to do my best. Take it a day at a time. There's a lot going on, but it's like, you know, not something I want to talk about. So yeah, just try to just try to do our best. That's really all I could say. Advanced oil is where 99% of new players give up on Factor. What happens in advanced oil? I don't know if I even reached it. It's our livelihood, man. I see you, are we? It's tough. That's tough. Let's trim this out. Start getting the ladders out as well. What's advanced oil? It sounds like a meme, dude. It really does. DST is much better IMO than Don't Starve. It's designed to scale with number of players. I'll probably play DST. Because I do have it. Because I had uh, Don't Starve when the... I got Don't Starve when it came out. Before Don't Starve Together. I played uh, until Reign of Giants. And then I got Reign of Giants. And then what happened afterwards was... Uh, I just didn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> so I just stopped playing. And Don't Starve Together came out. And they gave me a free copy. Because uh, they gave everyone a free copy. Aw, oh, someone's stuck. Aw, oh, Citrus, dude. Someone save him. Citrus dude, come on. Oh, he's free. Get out of there. Citrus man, thank you. Man, these dupes. Unreachable food. No, you could reach. Come on, man. You got this. You got this. So I got the free copy of Don't Start Together when they passed it out to everyone that already had Don't Start. So it was pretty sweet. So I, I'll probably play Don't Start Together. I'll probably play by myself to learn the game first. It is. It is. Oh, some of the mechanics change between the two. Okay. Yeah, I play Factor on and off to go to uranium processing and then give up trying to figure out the train signal. The train signals. Thanks. I'll probably play you single player. Not sure which would be better. Probably DST. It's more content. I think it is. Because I think if you play Don't Starve Together, you don't have to worry about getting the DLCs. I think that's like the biggest upside. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Do Steezy. But isn't it like you don't need the DLCs to get like the complete game feeling when playing DST versus playing actually just Don't Starve? If you're willing, watch the dude Four Seasons playlist, how to speedrun the bosses. Most people don't even know about bosses when they first start. Dude, I know about it because when I first played the game, I was chopping down trees. And this tree came alive and started whooping my ass, dude. He just came out and I thought it was like the Whomping Willow. I'm just going to run away. And he started chasing after me, dude. Holy shit. 
fucking trees started getting up from the ground. Bopping me with some uppercuts. Man, I was like, I'm not ready for this. I was not ready for that. I'm not gonna lie, man. It was... It was... It was an experience. But yeah, outside of that, yeah. Don't have uh, too much knowledge of it. So I want to go here, here, that's fine. Gotta remove this. Remove that. I could climb up. I could probably build down. I'll put a ladder there just in case. Go above it. Alright, so we're going to build some airflows. And then we're going to put deodorizers on top. And the logic's going to be that... Guys, I don't know if you guys hate this about deodorizers like I do. But one of the things that sucks about deodorizers is how they store polluted oxygen inside the building. So when you deconstruct the deodorizer, it releases the polluted oxygen. I hate that with a passion. So we're going to put some airflow tiles basically all right here. So by doing this, we're going to be hopefully allowing the polluted oxygen to flow out to the left and we deodorize that. Why would they do that? I don't know. It's because they have to hit a certain amount of polluted oxygen. So this is 90 grams, right? So the problem is, is that it's, I think, 100 yeah, to 90. So if you have less than 100 grams, it doesn't do anything. It just holds on to the elements, which is a big pain because you never get it exactly right. It's such a, ah, oh man, it's so annoying. So I have to do that to remove the carbon dioxide. I mean, uh. Polluted oxygen. CO2 we'll, we'll take care of later. I actually want to see. Maybe we have a strat. Can this survive in CO2? Oh, <gasps> it does. Alright, we're probably going to be... That might be better. We might just fill this up with CO2. That's probably a lot better. Oh, yeah, that's probably a lot better. All right, let's remove all the airflows. If we fill it up with CO2, we don't have to worry about food rotting ever. Ah, the tree garden's not really a boss. It's just a minor spot. What? I thought that was a boss, dude. It was whoop my ass. What about the koala font? I used to hunt that for beef jerky every winter time. Tree guards, spider queens. What the hell? They what? I did not know they had be like that sometimes. It's a pain. DST, where starving is practically impossible. Really? So you have to starve and don't starve? But I could include oxygen and oxygen not included. Feels weird, man. Three box around it, then you construct, fill the... See, here's the thing. They move. Sometimes they split into two gases. Sometimes they move together and merge. You have to get that lineup perfect, man. It's tough. Love that a sweet wheat farm could be a deep freezer. I, mean, I think we're going to do that. That makes the most sense. So let's make the oil lock. And then we're going to fill it up with seal too. So what should happen, ideally, is everything else uh, gets pushed to the top. Or we just start vacuuming. I think we just start vacuuming. Don't deconstruct until you have it trapped in three blocks. Would that work? Uh, that technically does work. But I'm not sure if the game allows you to deconstruct diagonally. That did get patched out out of most things. You can't even build a vent diagonally anymore or a chute. So I don't know if you could deconstruct a deodorizer diagonally. That's one thing. 
The only reason mine is filled with Oathies is because it's a prettier color. I see you over there, Xenosai. I see you over there. Alright, so we get the oil in. Oh, we filled out both. Oh, this is deleting. Guys, you want to see this? This is deleting oil. Nope, it's there now. Sweet. It was able to displace it. Okay. Alright, so... That deletes it. There we go. We no longer have CO2 in the middle. Sweet. Let's remove this. And then let's start vacuuming. I'll probably just pull it out of the same line out of here. So if you truly want all the PO2 gone, you're going to have to pump it all out and filter it. Or, yeah, just create a vacuum. That could be another thing. Just pump it all out or create a vacuum by pumping it all out. Or I did have the idea of having the deodorizer on the outside, hoping for the RNG of the polluted oxygen to move to the left. And then since it's already outside, I don't have to worry about it. That probably would have took a long time, though, realistically. All right, 65 watts. I could probably get, what, two, four, three pumps in here? Shouldn't be bad. So there's 12, right? Three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, I could probably move this all up and down. I thought they fixed gas moving uh, to the left. It depends on the gas. There's characteristics depending on that. So there's something in the game called gas characteristics where depending on the type of gas you have, they move in a certain direction. CO2 in particular loves moving to the bottom right. Even though it's supposed to be a little bit random with how they move, they like, they for whatever reason, they like to be bottom right. I don't know why. But I don't know. Did they actually make a change to gas moving in this game? I didn't know about that if they did. Alright, so we're just going to pump out with three pumps. This is probably going to be the easiest way to do it. And then we have to have... The power line as well. There we go. Why even vacuum? Put air flows and pump in CO2 from the bottom. Push all the PO2 up top. Hmm. I mean, it's not a bad idea. But I don't think it's better. That is an idea, though. Because the problem you run into is things like, um, kind of like this, where you have an extended platform, and then you have the gas kind of just accumulate there. Right? So it, it's not going to flow out as perfectly as you think it would. That's the problem. So even if we were to fill it bottom up and keep the top uncapped, you're going to get pockets of O2 struggling to move out. I mean, I guess that's true. You can do that. That is a thing, I suppose. Now, theoretically, that's slower, though, isn't it? Until we get into the milligram. Because theoretically, I'm releasing... 1.5 kilograms per second by pumping it out with three pumps versus having one pump move into CO2 500 grams per second in it's technically three times slower until we get to the milligram phase because the CO2 is never going to go below 500 grams right so until we get to that this setup actually removes gas faster technically Right, because even if you release gas from bottom up, it's not going to uh, release as fast. And then the new gas is the only thing that pushes the gas from the top out. 
meaning that I'm adding gas in 500 grams per second, but I'm removing 1.5 here kilograms, which is three times the amount. So technically, it's, it's I guess it's, it really doesn't matter. You could argue either way, but I think it's negligible. It's not uh, as efficient as it seems. All right, we're just going to remove all the gases out. All right, all right. So the meal what's growing, everything's looking all right. We're picking up the dirt over here. <laughs> I don't know where they're getting the dirt from. It might be from the polluted dirt from like rotting meat or something. A little bit of pressure damage, which is fine. Back over to here, we need to mine this. Get to start mining at the bottom. This removes a lot of the heat. I might want to start temp shift plating with ice. Just so that the meal wood could start growing up top. We might want to do that here. That might be a play. Alright, so let's make this one bin. Keep mining the abyssal light. Should be set. Alright, so let's get back into here. Oh, I don't have power. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Okay, so the water line is good. We could remove both of this now. We need to. The radiant pipe cooling line no longer needed. Oh, lag. Go up to here. Not this, but this. Go up all the way. And then technically we go this and draw the pipe. And then we just need to get power into here. Okay, cool. So we redid the power line slightly, which should be fine. Uh, I'm probably going to want to redo this power line so that's like right here. And then we're going to start moving small transformers to feed into this so that we don't have to use conductive wires. Save on a little bit of the uh, lead that we have. Making a sour gas boiler, we could. That's the only reason why I'm potentially keeping this AETN open. Since it's actually close to the volcano right here, and that's where the oil is, I could technically make a stupid large sour gas boiler where we use the volcano as a heat source. Uh, bop everything, oil-wise, into sour gas. Floats up, gets cooled into methane, and then we get natural gas. Thing is, is I don't know if I want to do that. Because technically, that's the slowest way to do it. If you have super coolant, it's it's much, much more convenient, to be honest. So I'm thinking the super coolant route might be the route of choice. But yeah, there is the AET in there for the sour gas boiling. Alright, so let's get done with the power line setups. So. Let's put a large transformer here. It's going to go into here. Makes a lot of sense. Have this come straight out. This becomes a uh, feed into something else. And then we got to redo these wires. So I probably add a new line, right? Because I'm going to get four pumps at the bottom. Yeah, just one more new line. I don't think any of the existing lines have enough uh, space on it. This goes into a separate setup. Yeah, 960, 840 out of 1,000. All right, so we got to move some of these. I actually don't need this running right now. Actually, I do. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we cut off the power. And then we got to run. Oh, that's the problem. I don't have a way to cool down the oxygen. I have to expand my cooling box. That's probably fine. I have to move these reservoirs then. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, everything is starting to make sense now. We could upgrade it. It's probably not necessary though. Catalina doesn't have food. Why? Oh, it's because you're using the restroom. That's fine. All right, we're going to have to expand the ice box that we have right here for the uh, cooling setup. Upgrade the power line? Probably not. All right, so that's not going to connect yet because I don't have a heavy watt in the back. So we're going to need three of these. Uh, that's going to be six tiles. Ooh, so close. 
So close. Oh, no, we need eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't this eight? Oh, wow. Okay, you know what? Let me move this. I got this wrong. This spot right here is perfect. Okay, so let's move everything up so that uh, it's not in the way. So this comes out from here. We need another one here and then another one here. And then we got to redo these wires so they reconnect. And then we get rid of basically everything here. Keeps that running. And then we could reset up the uh, power lines. Yeah. I think that's going to have to be the way. Vacuum is started. Good, good. Any more trimming we need to do? I think this is almost ready. Mine this out. We want to start removing these airflows. I probably don't even need this ladder anymore. Because I could just come in through here. Yeah, it's looking pretty sweet. Autosave lag is going to hit us. Oh, they're getting burned. It's only 48 degrees, man. People of chat, I got a question to ask. We see Mara over there taking a hot bath. Does anyone in chat uh, take ice showers? Cold showers? I heard that that's like a viral thing. I heard about that. You guys know what I'm talking about? People take cold showers instead of warm or hot showers. And they say that it's like beneficial. Does anyone in chat actually take cold showers? You do it to wake up. Hmm. I mean, I believe it. But it's like... Couldn't you just, like... Put some cold water in your face on the sink and then just take a warm bath? Or a warm shower? Not since the days of going to summer camp. Yo, man, back in summer camp, dude. I see you with the Mighty Stooge. Back in the days when you were a Boy Scout. Learning how to make the uh, Fisherman Knots. In the summer, sometimes I take uh, very cool showers. Sometimes. I like how you have to actually uh, say sometimes on a separate sentence. <laughs> it's not very often I do it, but when I do, it's in the summertime. I take hot showers. Yeah, right? That's what I do too. I feel like it's better for my skin. Not since power was out from Hurricane Sally. Oh my god, feels bad, Zandroff. Is your power still, out, still gone, dude? Feels bad. It doesn't do the same for me. I don't uh, start the mice cold. Ah, I see, I see. So you ease into the cold temperature? The classic ambient temperature water? Ill man. Depending on the season, dude, that's not that great. <laughs> ambient temperature, man. Doesn't sound like it's enough. Alright, I probably am fine to do this now. And then... Yeah, we do this, and then we have this right here. So we do this. Deconstruct that. Yeah, it should be good. No, it came back around 72 hours. Oh, okay, okay. If you have fever, maybe otherwise, that's crazy. I guess if you live off the grid and you bathe in a river. That's that's a, that's true. That's true. If, you, if you're off the grid, that's another thing. I didn't think about that. I heard about that as well. I hear that if you work out and your body is very hot from the workout, right? And then you take a cold shower as a way of cooling down. I hear that gets you sick. Is that true? Like you actually just get sick from doing that? Off the grid watching Twitch. Hey man, you got you got Wi-Fi, dude. It's a Starbucks across the street. Free Wi-Fi, man, just saying. Yeah, right? Your body goes. No, here's the thing. Doesn't your body always go into minor shock every time you shower? Isn't that true? Every time you shower and you step out the moment you turn off the water, doesn't your body go into a minor shock too? 
that it always happens. It's just that the degree of the shock is what varies. You do get sick due to a virus, but your body typically has enough to prepare against it. Isn't that what it is? That when your body goes into shock, it's more susceptible to getting sick. So it's kind of like... Uh, your body is basically... Not that you're you're prone to being sick, but you're more susceptible, which is a little bit different. Because it means that if there's something nearby, you're more likely to be sick once your body's in a state of shock. Hmm, not sure if enough to be called shock. Okay, maybe it's a category thing, and uh, you know, there's levels to it. That makes sense. That does make sense. But I read about that. That every time you go with take a shower, your body's technically in shock. Because of the temperature change. It's a little bit too drastic for your body to be okay with. And then it's like, yeah, that's a weak immune system. But doesn't your immune system get weakened every time your body goes into a state of shock? Isn't that how that works? Am I wrong? I might be wrong. That's chill. Changing from hot to cold and vice versa can get you sick. Yeah, but, but the idea is, is that um, when you're working out, your body's hot. And you think that taking a cold shower helps you cool down, but it doesn't. I don't know. I dry myself in the shower with the curtain closed, stays warm. I'll see you, I'll see you. It was just an idea. I remember uh, seeing a show that was saying something like that. That the person got sick because he took a cold shower after working out. I was like, is that true? I'm just thinking about that. My mom has a weak immune system because of all the uh, drugs she's on. Not because of shock. I've been in shock several times. Not really got sick. Maybe mental problems, but not sick. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. I still sweat after showering sometimes and after working out. Ooh. Isn't that not a good sign? Alright, so I, other people in chat, I've also heard that you could absorb water that your body actually uses via showering. And that it helps your skin out and all that. Right? So doesn't that mean that if you're sweating after you shower, it's not a good thing? Like, you're not absorbing it and it goes into your bloodstream. No, 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 not like that. But it's like, if you only drink water, you'll still get dry skin. Regardless of what you do. And you like, you need to have that additional, like, you put water on top of yourself when you shower to kind of, like, moisturize. Yeah, it does absorb some water. It releases some of it as it pours cool and gets smaller. Right, right, right. So isn't it that mean that if you sweat after a shower, isn't that a bad thing? Because it means that you didn't shower long enough or something like that? I might be wrong, man. A lot of things that I don't know if it's, like, true or, you know, myth. <laughs> don't know if that works the way it sounds like. I'm just kind of curious about that. Got some experts in chat, maybe? Alright, so, get back into the game. Okay, we're doing the vacuum. We can't plant the pinch of pepper nuts because it's not warm enough. It should be fine. Uh, back into the spawn design. Let's get this back into business. I probably want to reroute the pee water. I need to add a cooling uh, box for the spawn oxygen. Should be fine. Let's probably reroute the hydrogen. It's probably going to be necessary. So let's go for this. Uh, cut the CO2 afterwards. Isn't sweating just a way to lose heat? Hmm. Aren't there different reasons to sweat though? Maybe. You might be right, though. Pretty sure that's a myth. Before showers, people took baths, and you still come out of the shower sometimes sweat. Depends on the humidity. The space pans of the temperature. Time of the year depends. Core body temperature. Hmm. So that is a myth, huh? Interesting, interesting. Just gotta check some of those things out, man. Sometimes you don't know until you know, right?
All right, we're going to cut this line, build this line, reconnect that, remove this. Reroute the hydrogen to go around. Which probably is going to be this. And I probably go straight down. And then I probably want to go into here. And then into here. And then we remove this line. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. That's going to be fine. The water is there. Now we got to redo the power. Power is there. Okay, so we have a line here, a line here, and a line here. I should be able to do this. So I think it's going to be like this. We make that separate it. Same thing here. Same thing here. And then theoretically, this goes up. This goes up. This goes to the left, left, up, 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 and then this goes directly across. There we go. So then everything else gets removed. Hey, let's go. Sweating helps regulate the body temperature. Sweating to cool down the body is one of the reasons why we sweat. The water saps the heat and aids in evaporation. Hence, humid summer days suck. The air is already full of water. Another reason we sweat is for excretion. What the heck is excretion? Uh, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I'm not gonna lie, man. That's a pretty good question. All right, watch the dupes work, and then I gotta expand out the box over here. Oh, peeing. That reminds me, you guys. I gotta take a bathroom break. So we're gonna wait for the auto save lag. We'll follow a dupe, and then I gotta go uh, pee. Excretion. Extinction. I totally understand English and know how to pronounce every word perfectly. I'm just kidding, you guys. My English is kind of bad. I could speak it, but, like, you give me new words, man, I'm gonna struggle. If I don't know how to pronounce the words, man, I'm gonna have a bad time. But if I know the words, man, I'll be able to enunciate, speak the words... And uh, make it sound like it's legit, but uh, hey man, they don't think it'd be like it is, man, but a dupe. Who's this guy? I want to follow a dupe, a hey, biggest Cthulhu. Oh, you're afraid of the dark? Aw, oh, dude. We got to give him a, we got to give him a special room, dude. This guy is stressed out. All right, let's follow him. Guys, we're going to be or be. I need a pee. I'll be right back, you guys. Two minutes.
All right, guys, we're back. We're back, we're back. I unfortunately have to step away in like five minutes. But it's going to be for a really short period as well. Guys, do we have any coffee drinkers in chat? English is, English is jank, man. The reason people sweat when they're nervous is because they have prepared the body for a fight or flight moment. Oh, interesting. Dupes, uh, dupes talk about coal. <laughs> Your dupes need a rec room. Hey, man, I do. What, what is this? Double rec room? Come on, dude. Double rec room? What do you mean? They get to play video games, Space Invaders? There's three arcade cabinets. They can dance with the friends. They were just standing around. Yo, man. They're slacking off. <laughs> they're slacking off, man. They're not supposed to. They're just being little bastards. Did you see the Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix? Is that the guy from Ancient of Aliens making a new uh, series? Aliens, man. Aliens. Gotta put the Keanu Reeves voice. Don't like coffee. Hey, okay. So, got people of chat. I've been wanting to get some more coffee. A little bit more coffee in my life. Because I want to wake up earlier. So I want to wake up, have coffee. And then I want to make another cup of coffee for stream. So I can have a cup right before I start. So I hate making coffee twice. Because I have a single... Does anyone have an AeroPress? Anyone knows what I'm talking about? An AeroPress is a single cup coffee maker. That uses kind of like, you know, not a thermo, it's an AeroPress. AeroPress is kind of like a French press, but not really. And it's kind of like, a, you know, just a way to make coffee. But it's only a cup at a time. So I got to ask people that enjoy coffee in chat. Do any of you have a French press? Yeah, but do you keep it in a thermo? I do. I do have it in a thermos. But the thing is, is that I can only make a cup at a time. So I drink one cup and then I got to make a new cup, even if I have it in thermos or not. So I make it because my AeroPress only makes eight ounces of coffee. That's the biggest problem. So I don't have a coffee maker or anything like that. Get a Mr. Coffee. It works great. <laughs> so I was going to ask, actually, I've been wanting to get a French press. And... Is it the same? Is it better? Is it worse than like a coffee maker? Eight ounce is not good enough for me. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I'm like, I mean, I add the sugar, add a little bit more hot water to it. So it's more than eight ounces. But it's like, it's still not enough. Especially if I'm trying to wake up earlier and then get a cup for stream. So that's going to be around like 20, 24 ounces total with like hot water, maybe a little bit of milk. But I want to wake up and have black coffee. That's personal preference. So you have one, right? Oh heck. Do you like your uh, your French press? Because some people I've met, they're like, oh yeah, French press is great. I just stopped using it though after X amount of days. <laughs> and I never find out why they stop using it. They just say that, oh, they stopped using it. I'm just like, oh, that sucks. And it makes me think that maybe the French press isn't good. So in your opinion, how do you feel about the French press? I love it, but have not used an air press. I think pour over is just earlier. Hmm. So what's a Mr. Coffee? Is it just a coffee machine that's called Mr. Coffee? I think pour over is just easier. Okay. Oh, so the French press is a little bit of a hassle from what I could tell. Is that what it is? It's a little bit of a hassle. It's an old school coffee maker pot of coffee. Do you use for much more interesting? I love multi-use uh, things. It's a couple more steps than a Mr. Coffee. I'm down to put in the extra, like, arm movement. I think it's fine. They're probably just talking about a 12-cup coffee maker. Oh, the normal. Just let it sit on the uh, burner, right? Okay, okay. 
I want I I don't want to use that. So I think the French press is going to be good for me. I hope it is. All right, so the vacuum is in the grams. I have a lot of oxygen, so it makes sense. That takes some time. This is about done. Sweet. We could use the uh, tunnel shaft now for all the salt water coming in to spill. 12 cups all at once or two or five, whatever. Not bad, not bad. So at the end of the day, just get a regular coffee maker. <laughs> That's basically what I'm hearing from Chad. Just get a regular coffee maker, man. That's all you need. Let's make a little bit more steel. Let's make 10 more. My work used to have a single cup coffee maker that grinds your coffee when you want it. It was convenient, but probably too much for home use. Yeah. I used to work at an office that had a Keurig. So you would get the individual cups of Keurig. And it was not bad. It was not as good as my AeroPress when it comes down to flavor. That was the biggest thing. I mean, it was it was okay coffee. It wasn't great. And then it was like, it was from the Keurig machine, which is mad expensive, you know? I guess you could say I, was, I wasn't really a fan. All right, back to the spawn. Is everything built? We got to fix this, right? All right, so first things first, we got to remove this pipeline so that the CO2 is going to be rerouted. There we go. Now, this area right here, we go straight down, straight to the right, left, and straight down. That cuts here. We cut this now, so all this goes down. And then it goes around instead. We get to remove this. We get to remove that. And then once this empties out, we should be fine. Oh, this is not moving? Feels bad, man. Why is that not moving? The gas is not moving, boys. All right, so this is probably not connected somewhere. No, it is. What? It's just not moving. Dude, I don't like the Keurig because of the plastic, man. Not gonna lie. I'm not a fan of that. Too much plastic in my life. It's allowing hydrogen. But none of this is moving, dude. Feels bad. They make reusable rubber cups if you want. What's the difference between rubber and plastic? Is there a difference? I feel like they're very synonymous with each other. If I'm not mistaken. It feels like they I'm not actually sure if they actually are. There we go. It starts to empty out this way. Let's go. Keurig has uh, the K-Cups. You could fill with new coffee grounds each top. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not a fan of that, man. It feels bad. One goes through vulcanization, if I recall correctly. Okay. And that's rubber, right? Rubber is vulcanized and not plastic. You don't throw it out after use. <laughs> you can even buy little filters. That's not bad. It feels like the Keurig thing feels like a gimmick. It feels like it's like, it's just the same thing as regular coffee machines. It's just, it's kind of like buying a MacBook. To all the MacBook users out there, man, don't get me wrong. But dude, like for what you're paying for and the, the equipment you're getting when you buy a MacBook, it's not worth it. That's how it feels like to me. You're kind of paying for the name. You know, like, oh, yeah, I get to have the Apple products. You know, it could be kind of cool. But it's just like grand scheme of things, you know. That's why I don't want to get a Keurig. I agree as a Mac user. <laughs> you know what's the one thing across every Mac user I've ran into in the world? They've all said the same thing. Oh, you're not going to get viruses. <laughs> no one's going to hack a MacBook. And I was like, come on, man. You're kind of... I don't know, man. <laughs> this is true. There's not that many Mac users. But uh, I don't know, man. You probably still get viruses still. I, I mean, that's still... It's funny how that's... How everyone responds to that. Oh, yeah, you don't get viruses, man. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just kind of like... Is that good enough of a reason, man? We talking coffee, I have uh, opinions. Yo, Fractal Kai, we were. How do you feel about the French press? 
So I'm just googling why they named it the Kurek. Isn't that because the guy who designed it, that's his last name? That's one thing I hate, man. I just discovered a new spawn design. This is called the Too Legit Spawn. Named after myself. I'm like, come on, man. You gotta give it a better name than that. I discovered a new mineral in the world. It's called uh, Legit Uranium. I guess. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's weird. Mac is just good for programming and stuff, but you could just install Linux. Okay. Nothing is unhackable, IMO. Lamo. Yeah, yeah, it's true, right? Yeah, this, I mean, it's less people are going to want to hack MacBooks. I get that. But outside of that, it doesn't really mean anything. I agree with that. I just happen to like iOS, hence my phone choice. Mac OS, though, could be paid for for that. <laughs> I feel you with that. Man. Mac OS, I'm not... It's just so unfamiliar. You can still get viruses. It's just more productivity over game performance. Yeah. And to me, it's like, it's not worth it, man. Because it's like... If you look at the equipment, it just you're overpaying. And just no one likes overpaying. I hear that there's one good argument for getting the Mac. And that is for uh music recorders. If that makes sense. The music recorders. I hear that the Mac has the actual base uh base program that a lot of the other sound mixers feed off of meaning that you get the best quality if you use the macbook um like music synth not synthesizer the, the music mixer or something like that i forget they say that like a lot of the programs we used are based off of that foundation so if you just get the foundation program it's just you get the best results I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't do a lot of music stuff at all. I don't know a lot of the terms, how things work. It's just what I heard, right? Nah, he searched a Dutch word for excellence. No idea why he wanted to be Dutch. <laughs> he was probably uh, looking at the IKEA. He's like, huh, what's IKEA based off of? That's Swedish. We're gonna use Dutch, man. It's, it's, it's pretty good. People are going to think it's Swedish. <laughs> I don't know if that's what happened, but it's, it's kind of the memes. Legit Stranium. I know, right? Just use Linux. Oh, man. Linux. Linux is like... Linux is like... Um, it's like you have Android, and then you have iPhone. Linux is literally Nokia, dude. It's like, it's it's pretty good. That's its ups. But, oh man, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Gotta do a lot of extra work, man. Too legit theum. Too legit theum. That's pretty good. We did French press, two of us, for a few years. The brew was good. We also did Chemex. Oh, I heard Chemex was really popular. For a while, too. The issue was the coffee would get too cold too quickly. If you want to do more than a cup at a time. So yeah, yeah, so I was thinking that you want to get whatever coffee maker that you make. You want it to be insulated, right? But it doesn't mean excellence. More like adequate or neat. Oh, what? That's weird. Chemex is good for coffee. Takes longer than a press, though. Then you have Curium, the radioactive element named after scientists who died a decade prior. What the heck? They did it for the uh, teacher map. Macs are stupidly overpriced. Never buying one again. Lifelong ex-Mac person. I see a fractal kind. Music and probably graphics or movies. I could believe the music stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what sucks though? If you want to develop iOS, you need a Mac. Oh. That kind of, yeah. I guess I could see why people have to get a Mac now if they do uh, apps and stuff. So, sorry, Coffee. We finally ended up getting a Mocha Master. Technivorm, and it's awesome. Dude. That sounds like Espresso Blaster 9000. It sounds like one of those fake product names. It really does. <laughs> it sounds like one of those fake product names, man. I hate to say that, but it does sound like that. You know what I'm saying, man? It sounds like something from the Jetsons, dude. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what the Jetsons are, man? Am I, am I showing my age by naming the Jetsons? Any product name you can't pronounce must be good. I know, right? Sounds exotic. 
I know the Jetsons. Hey, there we go. I'm not alone. Let's go. Not alone, boys. I am not alone. Let's get you to bed, Grandpa. Ah, shit, fam. <laughs> ah, shit. I'm, I'm showing my age a little bit, huh? Jetsons were great. Jetsons lied to us. Did you know the Jetsons was taking place in the year 2020? They had flying cars. We got a pandemic. It's not fair, dude. It's not fair. Oh, it was you was born in 2020? Oh, feels bad. We're far then. We're more like Flintstones down ancient. Jetsons were great. Isn't this year George Jetson? Was this the year? That might be. Guys, I gotta grab something really quick. I'll be right back. Uh one, two minutes. One to two minutes. We back, guys. We back. Love the theory that the Jetsons is at the same time as the Flintstones. <laughs> is that a theory? Dude, that's wild. The dystopian ground level and the super high-tech air level, dude. That's wild. That's why I kept saying the Jetsons lied to us. Oof. Man, imagine. The cartoon cinematic universe. Dude, I've never heard of that theory before, man. Have you guys ever heard of the Disney theory? Where they argue. So people of chat. Do do you guys know uh, Disney characters? Are you guys familiar with them? Is it safe for me to assume that you guys are? And then I gotta ask. What is Goofy? Is Goofy a dog? How how does that work? Yeah, no, no, that's the thing. Yeah, he's a he's is he a dog? He's supposedly a cow. Yeah, I didn't know. That. I've always thought he was a dog, but I think Speedy is right. I read somewhere on the internet the other day that he's actually a cow. Because I was like, how does a dog? have a pet dog right and when someone was like yeah it doesn't make sense i'm like i agree but he's, he's like what else can he be he's he's a dog right and then someone was like no man he's a cow and i was like what question mark i was so confused and then someone pulled up the uh original drawing of goofy's wife have you guys seen that Goofy's wife is a cow. Now, I'm not calling her fat. She's actually a cow. Right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not fat shaming anything like that. She's actually just a cow. Like, she, she's drawn like a cow. She's got the ears. Y'all know how it is. I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, you know. God damn it, man. But she's actually a cow, man. And it's like growing up, I've never seen Goofy's wife. So I always assumed they were a dog. And then it's like, you look at Pluto, he's a dog. But it's like, it just didn't make sense. And then someone broke it that it was like, oh no, he's a cow. And I was like, dude, that's so insane. So there's literally like, people who still don't believe that he's a, uh, he's a cow. People want to just, ass not assume, but they want him to be a dog now. It's weird, man. 
he's a dog in my mind, nothing will change. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about, aw hack. There's people who will go, no, he's a dog, dude. He's not a cow. It's it's weird. Just think the Goofy movies, the world of cow people. It's, it's so crazy, right? The caricatures. 380L, what's good? I see you over there. His wife went to uh, the market and never came back. Oof, Speedy. Big oofs right there. Was she getting milk? <laughs> Mama went to get milk. What you don't know is that Mama's a cow. Goofy is a cartoon character created by Walt Disney Company. Tall. Anthropomorphic dog. Wow. Are you sad for me? 3DL, man, that's a weird question. That's kind of weird that you come and say hi and you ask that, man. I gotta be real. We're trying to have good times, good vibes. I don't know how to answer that, man. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. Feels bad, Speedy V. According to the voice actor, he's a canine, but not a dog. He's a canine? Hmm, Snoop says it's false that he's a cow. Who's Snoop's? But, but if you look up Goofy's wife, isn't she a cow? Isn't she a cow, man? Just saying. So there are both sentient and non-sentient dogs. Would you say sentient or humanoid? Right? Anthropomorphic is probably the best word for it. Not enough information. What does that mean? It sounds like the original writers didn't want to actually settle for one or the other. It sounds they're just like, hey man, whatever works. Can, can, can is goofus. Oh man, we're getting to anthropology with this. Uh, getting to anthro, man. His genus. Giving him his uh, proper names. Her name is Clarabelle Cow, so I think it's safe to say she is one. Yeah, right? She's a cow. Wait, so does that mean Goofy's son is half cow, half dog? Right? Like, I'm confused, man. If Goofy's wife's a cow, and then you start to think, does that mean Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse? They're both mice, right? I don't know, man. It's weird. It's weird. It's 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 one of those things that gets you thinking, man. Just accept everything. Is that why we don't have goofy movies anymore? You don't hear phrases like "I'm yearning for some learning." I remember watching the Goofy movie as a child, where uh, I think it's I think his son's name is Max, and he goes to college, right? And then dad comes in, starts skateboarding, tries to be cool. And then we never saw another Goofy movie again, dude. Feels bad. Started to sound like a bait conversation. <laughs> dude, just food for thought, man. Never think about this, man. You're in the shower. And you're like, yo, man, that ain't right. That ain't right. That's not supposed to be how that works. <laughs> Started thinking about it. It's like, wow, dude, none of this makes sense. Those shower thoughts, man. I think that's what they're called, shower thoughts. When you're just in the shower, bathing, you start thinking about random stuff. Like, huh. You know, if you think about it, that's kind of like that. It don't make any sense. Why is it like that? Nah, nah, I take cold showers. I don't have time for that. Ah, oh, this guy has the cold shower. See, that's why you got to change, man. You got to go into the warm shower life. Warm shower club, dude. Get those uh, thoughts in. You know what it is. Sometimes you gotta have some of those thoughts. Okay, the water is doing good. Yeah, we can empty out some of this now, which is not bad. I gotta watch this. All right, close, close, close. There we go. Water sealed. All right, so let's go into the new power line. This is already connected, so we can actually cut this now. We go in like that, and then I'm just going to remove this line. Probably up to here. And then we got to replace these three and add a new one from the bottom. 
Oh, Oni doesn't make bridges make flow move faster because it seems to teleport stuff from one side to the other very fast. It should. So you're right. Um, you theoretically save resources building bridges. If you go like this, and you go two in the middle, two in the middle, and then you have a pipe here, don't you technically save resources? I'm not sure. I might be wrong. I don't know. Bridges are weird. No, actually you don't, because it's 100 per pipe segment, and the only thing you're making is so that you could jump over. So it's not actually positive. No, it's the same thing. Uglarvis, what's good? Hope you're doing well. Only if you're using insulated pipes. That's another thing. The bridge properties are weird, because... You have all three segments, so... This tile, this tile, this tile are all active. Even though you're hopping over an area. It's weird, man. Bridges are weird. Uglarvis, hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesdays, man. Hope all is good in your part of the world. Alright, let's start redoing a couple of the power wires. So I have a wire here. Right? So that I could come down. Or come down here. All of these actually go down. So one, two, three, and then this goes up. That could work. I wondered because I was thinking that gas moves too slow. Ooh, gas does move a little bit slow. And it has to do with the pipeline size. You could only hold one kilogram, right? That's always been something that's weird, but I think it does make sense in the grand scheme of things once you work out the mechanics. But that's one of the things in this game that's kind of weird, not gonna lie. Oh, wait, that doesn't work. I mean, it shouldn't matter, because it's not that cold anyways, right? Yeah. Alright, so we go like this, like that, and this goes up. This becomes a bridge. And then we go one, two, three, and then four. There we go. Move it as a liquid and then vaporize it when it comes out. That, that I mean, it, that does move it a little bit faster. But it's that's so much work still, man. Not gonna lie. That's still a lot of work. Alright, we're gonna move the power lines out so we can reroute everything. And then once we do that, we could use the small wires for a lot of minor things afterwards as well. Powering the pump. Powering other things. We just got to redo some of the power wires. Should be fine. I have an idea of how this all should work. I do want to go through the conductive wires, though. I might want to reroute this. So it doesn't go through the wires here. Chat, thank you guys for coming out today and hanging out. We're still going to be streaming. I just want to thank you guys for being awesome. And we got to reroute this really quick. Thank you guys for all the good conversations today. Thank you guys for showing up and supporting the stream just by hanging out and being here. Shout out to Grushik again for the big raid. 100 dudes. Yes, we're at 100 dupes right now. We're still going to be streaming though. Don't worry. Just want to thank you guys. For uh, coming out to the streams. Thank you guys for all the support. And I uh, want to say this. Because I know uh, sometimes you guys don't make it to the end. Maybe you guys have to go to sleep. Things like that. So I just want to thank you guys. The people that are here. Thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate all the support you guys. And of course if you guys have any questions. Feel free to ask. Anything if it's only related let me know. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Sleep. Who needs sleep? Sleep's alright. You don't need to be afraid of running out of water. A hundred dupes P are crazy. Dead beef for your right. I have to make two sieves to actually keep up. I have to make two water sieves in order to keep up with the amount of uh, P water that I have to convert. 
24 bathrooms, 30 showers. It's too much for one water seep to handle. It's kind of crazy. Sometimes I fall asleep to the soothing voice of too legit. Is it, is it smooth voice time? <clears throat> Coming in live is your boy me, Too Legit City, with the late night jazz. And of course, today we have some oxygen not included. The fish are flopping, the fish are swimming, and the water is seething. In here today, we're going to be uh, clearing out some space, planting some cool, cool sleet wheat. And of course, don't forget the smooth jazz we'll be playing in the background. Don't forget to tune in late night, where we'll be doing the uh, late night talk shows. With your boy me, Too Legit City, and of course, the Black Mamba himself. Can you show your fish tank? I want to copy it. Sure. It's a simple fish tank design. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Got to use a YouTube voice for doing all that, man. So it's a very simple design. All we're doing is we're locking the fish into the four tiles so they don't move that much. Reduce movement. Really strong. So only four tiles. This is five fish. Uh, so this is 18 tiles. This is 27. And this is seven. So that's 33, 53, 61 tiles of water. So we have 61 tiles of water. And we divide that by eight. I think that's seven, actually. Careless whispers. <laughs> Um, how does that song go? Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Never ever gonna dance again. That that's guilt that's that's careless whisper, right? I think that that's George Michaels, man. The legend. This is actually a little bit more. There's like almost no automation. It's just a critter sensor to see if we have less than five. I don't want more than five. I could probably put six and change that up. Six times eight is 48, and I actually have enough space for that. This should be fine. So below six into an AND gate, and then in the uh, egg room, this is going to be below one. That's it. This automation is simple. This is for feeding uh, mule lice later on. Oh, I got to do that. I actually didn't set up my meal lice line. So meal lice line right here is basically we make it so that the dupes fill up this with meal lice and we drop enough on the weight plate. And then I have to lock the doors. That is one thing. I have to lock the doors. I forgot to do that. Got to lock the doors. Make sure the dupes don't have access. Was look to relax music on YouTube. I see you over there. It's a good song, man. Sounds like me, except I still dance. I just say, F it. <laughs> Yo, man, I can't dance. So I just say that so that I don't have to. Door don't block. Make like a room. No. So when the fish are in this water tank, what people don't realize is that fish is different compared to the other critters because they swim. So the other critters, they look at open tiles, right? as active tiles for them before they check to see if they get cramped. Fishes are different. They don't look for open tiles. They look for water tiles. And fishes don't care. Wait, why is that polluted dirt? Rotten Paku Filet? Oh, that's cooked seafood! Oh, no! That's not the Paku Filet. That's the wrong item, dude. Ah, man... Messed up, boys. I put the cooked seafood and not the uh, raw version. So we had a uh, food rot right there. You hate to see that kind of thing happen. It's only one full light. It's fine. So we'll change that. So uh, the Paku, they don't check for tiles. They check for water. And they don't care if there's actually a door there or even mesh tiles. They count water tiles. That's touching the same body of water. So in that regard... Uh, the bodies of water has to be more than 350 kilograms. So if this were to touch this body of water, these tiles don't count because the amount of water on there is less than 350. So they check water tiles 
And then the amount of water per tile has to be more than 350 kilograms. And then after that, if it's touching, it's all a part of the same body. Meaning that if you give them eight tiles each in this large box of water, you're good. Oh, it's 5452. So I get 48, which is six. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. So yeah, this is six Paku max without cramping. So that's going to be how that works. So they check these tiles for movement, which doesn't really matter. For cramping, it's going to be all of the water inside the box. So because of that, you can see that they're not overcrowded, even though it only seems like it's four tiles. Would all kinds of water work together as well? It should, as long as it's more than 35% of the total mass. So you have to make sure with things like salt water, because salt water goes up to 1100, that you have, I think it's 400 kilograms. I don't know what 35% of 1100 is. It's, I think, 385. I might be wrong. But 1100 times 0 0.35, yeah, 385. 385. So the 385 is how much you're going to need per saltwater tile. As long as you hit the mass threshold, mixed water tanks are fine. Poetic artist, what's good? I see you over there. Do diagonal tiles count as uh, touching? No. So if you do like a water tile like this, that means that you have a solid tile in between. These are separate tiles of water. This tile and that tile. Because the thing is with that is that it has to be touching. So that's going to mean that if this tile is touching, is these four that they check for. Do you have a wild one tile for lime? I do. That is over here. Where we have 60, 71 eggs. And basically this is locked so that I don't grab the eggs from this room. And then this room is checking for 64 eggs. So what's actually happening is I'm locking all the doors. So all the eggs get swept out to here. Once we get 64 eggs, I should probably lower this down to 32 realistically. Because the eggs are going to hatch in two cycles. No, no, no. Five cycles. Which might mean I might have a lot of fish. <laughs> That's going to mean I might have like 200 here. And then all the extra eggs go out into this tile. And we crack the eggs for omelets. Because fish eggs give you a lot of omelets. 2,000 uh, grams of raw egg. Which is two omelets. Which is 4,400 kilograms. Or 4,400 kcals of uh, food. So omelets is arguably... No, 2,800. That's 5,600. So that's five dupes. You feed five dupes with one Paku egg. It's kind of wild. So I'm trying to use that for a KCAL source. Because if we get the omelets starting to roll out, it's going to be so good. Fish omelets, man. Imagine you crack open the caviar and you made an omelet. That's kind of what it is, man. Memes. What is best food? Easy to get long term. It's probably fish eggs. If you're able to stabilize your fish farm and always have eggs... And then you make omelets off of your regular pocket eggs. You make a lot of kcals really fast. So that's going to be what we're trying to do. We lock the door so the dupes don't grab the eggs from here. And you don't grab the eggs from here. And then we just pump out the eggs. And we try to maintain a uh, control group of Paku. So are the eggs tame from tame fish? Yes, but tame Paku and wild Paku operate very similarly. Tame Paku and Wild Paku could be treated the same. If you didn't know. You're actually not going to run into a difference between a Tame and Wild when you're in a one-tile format. So the Wild Paku will give you one egg at its cycle 20 or age 20, right, of their age. However, a Tame Paku gives you the same thing. And that's because they don't starve. Pakus will lose 10 kcals per cycle because of the fact that they're not eating from a feeder, right? That means that they're not going to be happy because they're tame and they didn't eat from a feeder. 
Now, the upside with that is, is that that just makes them reproduce at a normal rate. So reproduction just goes back down to 7% per cycle, which basically means that by cycle 20, they're going to give you an egg. And they don't starve to death because they have enough kcals in their uh, calorie tank. Because when they're not eating from a feeder, they're not going to be happy, which means their metabolism goes down by 90%. So that means they could actually survive for 45 cycles if they're not being fed which means they never starve because they only live for 25 cycles. So with all that accounted for, Wild Paku and Tame Paku could both be just kept in a one tile setup and nothing's going to happen. They're going to lay an egg, you sweep the egg out, and then the egg flops back in. So we're just trying to maintain balance and then cook all the eggs into omelets. That's better for a vole they nerf too much. Yeah, the, the voles are not bad. The voles are better if you want morale. Because meat and barbecue gives you a lot more morale. Plus eights, right? Versus what? Omelets are plus two? Plus four. So barbecue is double that at plus eight. That's the biggest difference. What happens to a goldfish in clean water? Drown? No, they just swim. Nothing happens. As long as it's liquid, they're fine. You think they could be in oil. They could be in polluted water. They could be in salt water, Brian. Nothing's going to happen to them. The only thing that kills the critter is if they're outside of their temperature range, regardless of which one they're at. Gulpfish, tropical fish, uh, regular Paku. You just have to make sure that its temperature is okay. And they could be in any liquid. Any liquid. As long as there's enough on the tile. Alright, let's go back to the spawn. We didn't finish this yet. So the hydrogen got rerouted, which is fine. That goes into there. We're not connecting that. The water is fine. And then we're rerouting the power right now. These are not fed yet, but it's going to be okay. Uh, I probably... Hmm. Do you use nature reserves for morale? At the all, minus 50. Yo, man, temperature range. If it's not, then it's fine. I don't know, man. I don't I don't know if I really use nature reserves. They're, they're kind of just all right. We, we use this, though. Oh, yeah, hey, this is nature reserve. Yo, my bad. We got six nature reserves right here. So, yeah, we do use them. Because they're scheduled to go into the bath time. So they wake up, take a shower, and that means they get the morale bonus. So we, we have nine morale, technically. You get six morale for going into the room. And then when you shower, you get three morale. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Liquid steel, man. You're making fried fish, dude. I see you over there. Fish are gonna die, man. After 100 cycles, I got carnivore. Now I is near 400. I'm still feeding dupes for barbecue. <laughs> you got it, man. Barbecue's for life, dude. Once you have a little bit of barbecue, you can never go back. <sighs> alright, alright. So, power line. We gotta reroute this. I probably have to cut part of this off. So we got to build that. We got to build this. And then we got to do this line. So this is going to go into the left and it goes up there. I kind of want all four of these to go down right here. Geek coming in with the 23 months. Thank you so much. I see you over there. Welcome back to the city. Enjoy the emotes, the 20 dice ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But thank you so much for the support. I see you over the geek. How are you? How was the Tuesdays? Hope you're doing well. We're just rerouting some power right now. But yep. Welcome to the city. Hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. All right, we're rerouting the power right there. Runs with the power spine. And then we get to remove these wires. So that I could get rid of the bridges here. And then that's going to make doing these wires a little bit easier. I was trying to say hi. You click sub instead of uh, chatting. Feels bad, yo. Feels bad. Geek didn't want to support us. He just uh, happened to misclick the buttons. Guys, can we get some more misclicks in chat? <laughs> Be like Geek. Just misclick and subscribe. <laughs> Appreciate that, Geek. Even if it was a mistake, thank you so much, man. 
All right, we're going to reroute this so it looks a little bit better, kind of like the wires that we have right here. Nah, it was just a notification thing. You're on autopilot. I see you. I see you. More misclicks, please. Hey, man. Sometimes you just got to get lucky. Still can't find the unsub button. Oh, man. Thank you guys for staying subscribed. Or thank you guys for forgetting to hit the unsubscribe button. Either way, helps me out. So, uh, appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> whether you just forgot, whether it is you want to subscribe, hey, man. I'll take it either way. Dude, this... Deconstruct's taking forever, man. There we go. Okay, so all the wires are gone. We're going to want to reroute this. So this is going to want to go here. This goes in here. This goes straight up, and this one goes into the side. Okay. We'll have these two. I'll probably have to reroute my pumps as well. Level 3's forgotten for years, dude. That's that's the dream, dude. That's the dream, Dark Matter. Imagine someone subs tier 3 and forgets to unsub. Slowly just siphoning away. That's insane. You can sub for free on YouTube. Yeah, don't forget to check out the YouTube, you guys. <laughs> it's funny because I literally have to hit a button every month to stay sub. Yes, and that means Cthulhu has Amazon Prime. Guys, if you guys have Prime... Make sure to use your Prime subscription on someone. If not me, remember to use it on someone's stream channel. Make their day, make their month, make their life a little bit better. Take the money out of Jeff Bezos' pocket. Support the streamers and content creators out there that are making sure that the uh, platform is running smoothly by just having variety for you guys. So guys, make sure to use that Prime sub. Especially if you guys are uh, paying that Prime subscription over like $120 a, a year. <laughs> yeah, don't let them waste your prime, man. My go-to for how to build anything is on YouTube. That's true. Is Puff useless only for slime? Uh, you can. Because later on, you're going to need an oxidizer if you go the hydrogen route for rockets, that Bifa. One of the things you're going to need is oxalite before you get to liquid oxygen. So oxylite. Right here. You need to f put this in so that your rockets have combustion, right? When you're doing your rocketry, especially if you're doing petrol rockets or hydrogen rockets, you're gonna need a form of oxygen. Until you get liquid oxygen, which is required to get super coolant because you had to get to negative 183, you're gonna need some form of it. And sometimes you might not be able to make the oxalite refinery because you might not have gold, right? You need to have refined gold for this. So because you might be playing on an asteroid that doesn't give you gold, right? If you're doing a Borea or Verdante or something like that, those maps are to give you arbitraries. They give you uh, everything but gold. So you have to build steel for a lot of your setups. But if you don't have gold, you could just go the dense puff route. These guys give you oxalite. 